Hello and welcome everybody, I'm One Proud Bavarian and today we are going to play some Crusader Kings 2 with the Guardians of Azeroth mod and we're going to play the Murlocs. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You didn't really think we would be playing the Murlocs now, would ya? No, what we're going to do is some historical... Um, uh, historical... I always say hysterical and I, I don't know why. But we're going to play some historical immersion project and we are going to have a fun campaign because this one is going to be a very difficult one, seeing as we are going to be in a bit of a different situation than we usually are. Usually, you know, for example, we start in the Viking Age, everybody's still a tribe, everything is going well, you can play whatever you want because there are not that many heavy troops and no holy orders to begin with. But in this playthrough, we are going to jump into the best, the very best start date. And that is, of course, 1204, right after the Byzantines fell and the Latin Empire has been established. And if we go to the government map mode here, you will see that the tribals have been pushed back quite a bit. Now, there is a small area in Europe that contained themselves into the tribes for such a long time in comparison to everybody else. And the borders of those tribes barely ever changed. I mean, look at this beautiful thing. Look at this. You've you seen, you seen Prussia here? Nothing ever changes in Prussia. But... Things are about to be changed right now because the Livonian Order and then the Prince Archbishop Albrecht of Livland have landed over here in good old the Baltics region. And here is the Schwertbrüder Orden. So the Livonian Order has already landed and we need to administer some band aid to the region because right now the Removan Faith is being removed. And we, of course, have to stop that. Now, this will be a bit of a different playthrough because usually you are interested in becoming, you know, feudal as soon as you can, especially this late into the game. You gotta take care of some stuff. You gotta, you know, get strong or die trying. But I don't feel like they would do that here. The Removans want to keep their way of life. And we are going to try and keep both the Schwertbrüder Orden and, of course, the Teutonic Order at bay. Now we're going to start here in good old Poemedy as High Chief Gimme. Gimme. Let's just call him Gimme. That's a that's a nice name. High Chief Gimme of Pomedi, and we are going to try to contain the threat that the Christians now that they have landed over here are posing to us. I think this will be a bit wacky because despite the Fourth Crusade just being over, the Christians actually can immediately call a crusade and the Caliph can immediately call a jihad. But that is none of our concern. I mean, you know, we're not down there. I don't really care. We are going to try to withstand the Northern Crusades in this playthrough. And I already prepared a set of rules. It is this one. Uh, you can stop the video here. Check what I changed. It's all pretty basic. I just changed it so that the religious conversion speed and the culture conversion speed are a bit different. That is the most important part there. But other than that, it's a very, very normal set of rules. And of course, the Aztecs are turned off because I know that all of you hate the Aztecs. I honestly kind of like him. I like to see them in the West and see everybody freak out about it. But, you know, hey, I don't mind them not being there, seeing as I am not in the West either. Now, if you don't know the Historical Immersion Project, I've had this on the channel quite some time. Uh, quite some time ago, actually. Yeah, I think it's been like three months or something since we have been here. And it is a wonderful, a beautiful mod. It enhances all of, the mo uh, all of the map. It gives you so many different mechanics. For example, empires now have the imperial decay thing going on that if they decay too much if they grow too weak they just splinter there is so much cool stuff going on in hip and we are just over here at the border to poland we have held our lands for ages we do not even remember a time before the removants have you know entered this area now with the removing faith it is a bit difficult because reforming in HIP means that you need four holy sites. In the vanilla game, you only need three, but here you need four. And you can see one, two, three, and then four, five. So these two are a bit further away. That can be quite difficult. They are in the heartlands, in the heartlands of the Ruriki dynasty, the Rurikovic dynasty. And of course, they are also in the heartlands of what the Mongols will take whenever they arrive. But that is not of our concern as of right now. Let's just take a look at ourselves. I achieve Gimme the sixth. Oh, Jesus, the sixth already. Of Pom uh, Pomedy. Uh, so he's a brilliant strategist, an aggressive leader, a formidable fighter. He is humble, content, just, and gregarious. He is somebody that you would call an inspiration for all removants around him. And let's try to make this indeed the one move that we can uh, make. If, if we fail here with an early establishment of becoming, you know, the local overlord of the removants, then the removant faith will have no 
proper chance in hell of actually winning. Now, I want to see if I can marry anybody. I would love, for example, to marry somebody in Liatuva. You are 21 years old, you are removing, and I would love to marry you. Absolutely, this is almost possible. Can I take you as a concubine? I mean, obviously not, but, you know, almost possible. What about you? You do have another daughter. Uh, I would like to marry you. Is this too much to ask? <laughs> it appears it actually is too much to ask. What if I send you a gift, my friend? This small alliance here would even be fine with me at the very least. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you some gifts. And I'm going to try to make you my... Excuse me. I would like to make you my wife. Political concerns. Maybe I will be able to do it in a second after we unpause the game. Sometimes the game needs some... You know, calculation there. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to focus on warfare because this character is only 31 years old. He may be content, but he knows that in the south you have the Polish king, 43 years of age, called Vladislav III of Polska, and he obviously wants to take over the swampland. I believe it's, it's actually like a bit swampy over here, right? He wants to take over the marshland over there to strengthen his grip on at least a part of the Baltic Sea. And then over here you have Lietuva, quite strong, quite, you know, magnificent in their troop size. Maybe our strongest ally as I, you know, I, I mean I did want to marry- Ooh, I have an ex. Wait, excuse me? Oh my goodness. Alright, we're going to take a look at that in a second. I'm not going to give you that ex. No way, Jose. But I would like to get, you know, some sort of alliance going here. The Lietuvans or the Lithuanians, of course, they are- They are big. They will be our friends. I don't think I'm going to actually go to war with them anytime soon. But I don't know if they are long-term allies, but we do need them to keep Prince Archbishop Albrecht and, of course, Hochmeister Vino of the Schwertbrüder Orden under control. Now, he's Bavarian. Oh, he is Bavarian. I like that. Let me tell you. That's a, that's a favorite of mine. Anyway, uh, I will marry, you know, maybe one month in, I will try to get this woman. If I can't get that woman, I'm just going to marry some random people. Now, if you have not been on the channel for the longest time, then let me just say this will be a roleplay playthrough. I will not necessarily power game. Uh, if we lose, we lose. I just want to tell a story here, and there are good stories in Loss. Uh, not in the comic, but in Loss in the game here. Now, what shall our ambition be? Maybe just, you know, get married? I think that is adequate. He, he would like to get married, sure. I'm going to set the crown focus, of course, on Pomedy. We do have a church in here, Temple of Regia. That is probably not how I pronounce it, but that is okay. He's one of us, you know. I mean, we've lived here for generations. I think no surprises there. Uh, we could worship the ancestors. I don't want to do any of those customization decisions. Thank you very much. The Ushgavenes Festival. Interesting. Let's take a look at... You know what? Let's take a step back, because everybody probably knows about the removals, but let's actually read what it is all about. Baltic paganism is polytheistic, with a pantheon of gods led by Deves, god of the sky. Other main gods include Pekunas, god of thunder and lightning, very similar to the Germanic god Thor and the Slavic Perun. Other important deities include Saul, goddess of the sun and fertility, Daugava and Menes. Now, we have the axe of Pekunas. That is absolutely outrageous. I think this is a random spawn and similar to um, Mjolnir for the Germanics. The stone axe strongly resembles the axe of Pekunas himself, as described in the myth. While a prestigious artifact in itself, merely holding it seems to also instill military confidence and bravado in its wielder. Absolutely beautiful. I am a huge fan. So what I would like to do, you know, why don't we start out raiding a bit. And the Polish are already not of the best opinion. So why don't we just, you know, go ahead and pay them a visit. Oh, and we are in heavy armor. Now that is not adequate. Of course, the, <laughs> the pagans over here would not be running around in full steel plate armor, but I think that is okay. You know, there's worse things in this game. And I mean, you gotta consider that this is so late. We are quite literally the only surviving tribals in this entire in this entire map. Outside, I guess, of the Arabian tribes and the African tribes. Uh, and you, the Irish. Poor, poor Irish. But let's be real, the Irish are screwed and we are not. Not yet, anyway. Alright, let's not pause a bit. The Bektashi Order, so the Sunni Holy Order, uh, has been founded. And I just want to double check. Another Sunni Holy Order. Hello there. Would you like to marry this lady to me? Really? Political concerns, I suppose, are simply too high. Are we... <laughs> this should actually work, but it just simply does not. Oh, what a disappointment. I'm going to wait a bit longer. And we're going to start to... Oh! Did I... 
think I forgot. Right, I did not turn on looters. There you go. Very smart decision making right there. Now, I do want to marry because currently we do not actually have an heir. But I will Ah, oh, there you go. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Gerdwiller. You are now in the family. Now, as the gods demand, she will not be the only woman that I lay with. Of course, I need some concubines. We're getting married. We can collect a royal aid duty to pay for the ceremonies. I think we're going to take the prestige here. Thank you for giving me that lady. Anybody else got anybody that I could take for a concubine, for example? No. Hmm. Maybe just some random people, you know? There's nothing wrong with taking some random concubines. I could take concubines, you know, oh, you're strong and you are this or that. But I'm not really interested in power gaming there. I want to have some local concubines because that is just the way the world works down here in the tribes. Alright, that is one concubine. If we do find a strong concubine, I'm, I'm gonna say it. I mean, I would absolutely, you know, take them. Oh, is my child. Yeah, you will definitely not give that one away, will you? Uh, what about you? Take a concubine. Are you also the child? You are not the child. You are a new concubine right there. And we have been married. And of course, that fulfills the ambition right there. We could try to become the king of Liatuva. Let's take a look at the De Jure Kingdom borders. Liatuva has quite nice borders because they're easy to actually assemble. You know, we're just gonna take Prussia and then some pieces from here and all of a sudden we would be in a position to do it. Now, do mind that we already are a high chief, so we already are a duke. That is because all of these start out as, you know, titular d uh, dukes. Titular de dukes, that's not a word. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna maybe try to do that, but we are content. I don't think content fits with, hey, I wanna become the king of Liatuva. But on the other hand, you know what? I think I'm just gonna try to increase the size of my domain. And as we're sieging this, we're actually having a lot of success there. It's going very, very quickly. You have not raised your troops yet, as I understand it. Thank you for making these ladies my concubines. I believe we can have one more. Renewed Jihad. Yeah, as I said, the Jihad and the Crusades, they're both going to kick up very, very, or, you know, start off, start up very, very early here. I don't want to take the Poles in a fight. They are clearly superior to me, which means that we will withdraw immediately. I, th I honestly think we will withdraw, like, just in a, in a couple of seconds here. Yeah, he's assembling every single man he has, and we already looted this place. I mean, we can't loot anything unless we take the castle, but let's be really, we're probably not going to be able to take the castle. Now, what I would like to do, and which is also, of course, tradition, these people still raided each other. The removants weren't just sitting and are like, oh, uh, we're friends, you know, we're like, religious, oh, excuse me. Wow, that is crazy. That is a crazy amount of a garrison. We have the same. Oh, we do. Wow, that requires so many troops then. If Poland declared war on me and I never raised my levy, they would literally not be able to siege me. A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one, I suppose. When it comes to the retinue, we can get some. See, heavy retinue is, of course, always the best, but I don't think we're going to actually go with that. I think we're going to go with some easier ones here. Let's get these. You know, I think in this case, you want to have more troops. I think that is all that matters. Just give myself more and more troops. Oh, the assassins in Syria under Grand Headmaster Muhammad Noor al-Din. That's going to be fine, I reckon. Uh, in Egypt, of course, we have Saif al-Din, which I believe to be... Uh, what? I thought he was the son of... Uh... Wait, are you... You're not Salah al are you? Is he not around yet? I'm not actually certain of that. Maybe Saif al -Din is... Jihad for Turkestan? What? I mean, what? What? What kind of Jihad is that? <laughs> uh, this episode of Lost Abbasids is definitely interesting. So there is a horde over here. But it is a Buddhist horde. And because of that, they just declared a Jihad for Turkestan. You know what? I'm not going to comment on that. That is just very strange. But apparently the Turks, Turan, they are going home. You want to be spy master? Um, you are in good standing with me. Your spy uh, your spy ability is very good. You know what? I'm actually going to make you spy master. Hello, my new spy master. How are you doing? Now that I fulfilled her desire there, that should also be a positive. What I'm going to do as well, I'm going to organize some raiders. I'm going to build some legend. 
And we're also going to build some... Z uh, maybe not build zeal, actually. But we are going to hunt apostates because I don't want any Christians in my country. But I need to... Yeah, I can't nominate anybody there. That's fine. Alright, so far so good. We are going ahead here and we are hopefully going to be able to expand already in this episode because as I said, look at these fellas. Now the thing about the Hochmeister Winner of the Schwertbrüder Orden is that he actually is the leader of the uh, Holy Order, meaning that he can raise the Holy Order for free at will whenever he goes to war, which should be about 4,500 troops. Nothing to joke about in my opinion. Oh. You're not married, uh, um, you know, you're not one of mine anyway. You want to be the diviner. You are quite, quite significantly better than her, you know? Nothing wrong with that, sure, absolutely. You are now the diviner, and you shall hunt apostates even further. To the end of the world, if you ask me. You know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to pick a patron deity. There are many deities whom you can choose to follow. The supreme ruler, our father Divas, or his ambitious brother Velnia, as god of the underworld. Black in war, pray to Pekuna, as god of thunder. Zemina, the Earth Goddess, blesses her faithful with fertility and good harvests. You know, at the end of the day, we have his axe. I mean, we have to pray to Pekunas. There's no other way. Pekunas is the God of Thunder. He rides the skies in his chariot with his magical axe in his hand. His eternal enemy is Velnius, the Serpent, Lord of the Underworld, whom he protects us from. Those who are faithful to Pekunas will be given his courage and success. This, this just makes me think. The Band of Medina. So there is an actual warrior lodge for the removance. You know what? Let's join that, absolutely. I'm gladly going to prove myself. At Ruma and the Band of Medina, I've chosen Naudots as my opponents. The staunch man eyes me up and down when we are introduced. Fresh meat, eh? He offers mockingly, before shoving an elbow into my side, making everyone laugh. Uh, you know what? Honestly, I like him. He's a fighter. I mean, he's not a fighter at all if I look at him. Honestly, we should destroy him. But he, he's a good dude. I, I like him. Good humor. The onlookers are cheering for me as I swing my wooden club with increasing enthusiasm. When it's over, now that it's on the ground, his face red with, uh, with embarrassment. I shrug, smiling on the, uh, to the crowd and at my opponent. We gain some prestige, he gets wounded and gets a black eye. We get out of this without any issue whatsoever. A steward eight months has suggested that you build a great monument as a display of Pomedi's might. As such a project would surely have its benefits, it would be costly and you would need a great number of men to construct the monument. Now the way I see it, if you raise such a monument, the tribes in your area will surely respect you a bit more. And this just reminds me, by the way, I would love to form a alliance with you. Uh, what are you doing? He's attacking Turov and he is winning. Wait, um, wait, what? He's going to be conquering Pinsk. Oh wow, Lietuva blobbing, I like it. I shall erect a monument in the honor of Pekunas, a monument dedicated to my house and the ancestors. Nope, in the name of Pekunas. That will give us piety. We could do it with our ancestors. And we have a long, long line of ancestors ruling over this land, going back all the way to 870, the, so the earliest start date. But I'm going to erect it in the name of Pekunas. We're not particularly zealous, but I mean, we are blessed with the axe of the one and only. And I think we need one more concubine. Indeed, we do. I'm told I did not receive a single scratch during your, uh, you did not receive a single scratch during your initiation. That is the kind of impressive fighter we would be honored to have sitting at our table. You're hereby humbly invited to join our ranks. Easy money. Easy money right there. Ooh, a tall lady. You know what? Absolutely. You will be my new concubine. After the duel, Naudot asked me for advice on fighting. A little taken aback, I happily offered to train with him on occasion. Today he thanks me for being a good teacher. And friend, he adds, dunking me on the back before he cocks his head in direction of the sparring grounds. Thank you. You know what? We are friends. I, li I like Naudos. He's a good he's a good fella. Are you in, in whose court are you? Would you like to come to my court? No. Oh come on. If if he came to my court, I would be very happy. I decided to accept your suggestion to make Vikela into your concubine. Hello Vikela. Nice to see you. Seventeen years of age. Bit younger. I need a son. If none of you were informed, I desire a son. A petty wench. A pretty wench, I mean, as throwing yourself at you. You know what? Absolutely. We're a lustful kind of guy. We're the we're the kind of guy that goes out of his way to have some fun when it comes to, you know, his concubines, his wives, and maybe even somebody in between that is neither. I was thinking, I would love to do some conquesting here, but we need some more prestige, which means that I want to raid, which means that I am in a bit of a pickle here. Uh, we are down on troops, apparently. I don't know why. Because our martial skill is even higher now. Uh, I wish the... I wish the po oh, they are busy. 
make Veliki Knerz Roman of Galish Volin a tributary state. He's probably... Oh, this is going to be a very tight race between those two. So if I could go ahead and just siege this down, I would be incredibly happy. Oh, hate that. Okay, where are your troops, buddy? Lechnir, Sandomir. Oh, he's not coming our way. Now, I will say, by the way, that this is a bit of a weird spying system. I always use it. If you see somebody leading an army, you can click on it and it will show you its exact location. Even if it were on the other side of the world, like this dude, for example. How would I know about that, you know? Don't think too much about it. Don't think too much about it. Now, I want the prestige, the money, and everything else in between from looting the Polish lands. They have given up their ancestral faith of the Slavic belief, and I, of course, must... Pa oh, I think he's coming. Is he coming for me? I don't actually think he is. Where are you going? Oh, I think he just lost his fight. Oh, he totally did, didn't he? Your reputation as a formidable raider has spread even to faraway lands. People everywhere speak the name Gimme in hush tones, fearful that in doing so they might invoke you like a vengeful guard and bring ruin down upon themselves. Nice. Being a raider gives you more prestige, better martial, just all around great. Ah, and this event. You know, we are a raider. They should not give me an event that says, hey, bro, you want to lose prestige for raiding? Guard oh, paradox. Oh, you know what? In this game, or in this mod, it actually only is 50 prestige. It is uh, 200. 200 prestige in the damn base game. So you know what? I'm going to take this. Plundering leader, absolutely. I mean, that's what I'm here for. To quote one of the memes of this age. Now, he is actually losing this war. I'm a huge fan of that because it will keep him busy elsewhere. Finally, the monument is finished. It turned out just as you envisioned it, or perhaps even better. To celebrate its completion, a grand ceremony was held in Pakuna's honor, and what a ceremony indeed. Tales of it will be told for as long as the monument stands, watch over Pamedy. We get 250 piety. Thank you very much, game. Thank you very much indeed. Now, with that being done, uh, we can finish the entire destruction of this province. I don't even think he could properly challenge us anymore because he is being occupied left and right. And once we've done that, we are in a position to just, you know, go ahead and eat up, gobble up our fellow tribal leaders. As a members, blah, blah, we strive to better ourselves and each other. One way is the occasional sparring match for practice and honor. Seek out and duel the fledgling Glaboons. You will find them in Galinda. In Galinda, you say. Ah, down there. You know what? I shall travel there. Hello there. I shall duel you. Elder Glaboons has chosen to accept your challenge to personal combat. A duel will take place in the next few days. A duel for honor, huh? The fight has gone on for what feels like hours. The initial confidence I felt has begun to wane, and my movements are getting sloppy. Then, just as my knees are about to give way under me, I smack my wooden club fr uh, flat across his leg. We won. Uh, we did not actually take any damage either, so that is just beautiful. Exactly as you'd like this to go. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just spam some light... Oh, maybe some horses at the end of the day. That would be cool. But, uh, you know what? I think we want to spend the piety that we just gained here. There you go. Beautiful. Look at this. Some archers. That's an interesting unit model. After the duel, Glabunas asked me for advice on fighting. Oh, yet again. Welcome, my... Fr Dude, I'm making so many friends. And they're not actual friends. But I'm making so many friendly people at the very least here. By fighting them and defeating them. And yeah, so the wacky stuff here is that the Fourth Crusade just happens, and yet the, post, uh, the Pope is like, Hey, you know what we need? Another Crusade. But this time, truly, for Jerusalem. Jerusalem has been pushed towards the, go uh, the ghost, the coast here, almost being entirely devastated. Now, I do not believe that Sultan Al-Adil Muhammad Saif al-Din of the Al-Ajubi dynasty will actually be able to fend them off. That seems impossible. But it's good. As long as the Crusades are down there, they're not up here, eh? I know they are different mechanics. I know, I know. Don't even sweat it. Just a joke. Just a jokers indeed. Now, this should go very fast because this is merely a church. Oh, and you are also plundering. Welcome to the plundering club. Wait, are you plundering? Conversion of... Oh, you coward! The conversion of Paugudi. The tribes of Paugudi have been converted to the Catholic faith. A group of priests sent by the Kaiser of the Heiliges Römisches Reich have performed a great ritual during which they have converted the entire population of Paugudi alongside High Chief Nermok VI and many of his vassals. With this act, the people of Paugudi have once and for all forsaken their old pagan gods. This ain't right. This ain't right. And I will show them. 
We gotta teach them. We gotta teach them a lesson. I think we can all agree on that. Can't. We? Oh, what is this? How dare you kill my retinue? Who even are you? <laughs> Who is this? Who? Why? What? Excuse you? You just try to raid me? Not like this, you coward. Not like this. Now they are too strong for us to be taken. Actually, you know, to actually be taken out here with just our levy. But I personally feel like we may even have the money to hire some mercs here, even if it is just a smaller band. Pechenik band, I mean small, you know, 3,600 people. I don't know how small that actually is, but here is what we are going to do. Ah, oh, oh wait a minute, I, I meant to click, wait a minute. That is my neighbor, right, I was a bit confused, but he is my direct neighbor, and you know what? We've been neighbors, we've been neighbors, my friend, for long enough. No doubt in my heart that it's time to finish our neighborhood. Now I'm actually, I know we have a strong ally here, but I think I'm gonna go ahead. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna try something sneaky here. I'm gonna declare this and then I'm just gonna sit here. And then once you come in, I would love you. How do I do th Ah, there you go. Please siege this down. Because he, with his troops, is unable to actually siege this. We have too many troops there. But he will be able to clear that out. Eight smiles upon me. My wife, concubine Namega. Oh, not my wife. My concubine Namega is pregnant. Well, well, well. Let's raise the troops and let's march in. Oh, no, don't do that. Aha, got him. Let's march in when our friends also arrive. The 23rd of August, I will be there one day early. I think that is perfectly fine. Um, I would love some better commanders, though. I mean, I can't be the only good commander. I am the only good commander. What a disgrace. Wow, that is just disgusting. Uh, I would like to auto-balance this. Uh, what is this supposed to be? I'm obviously the... You know what? I might as well just command this on my own. We don't need more than one flank. Are you crazy? All right, and with that being said, let's slow it down a bit because I want to watch this fight. Ah... Look at me absolutely crushing him. Also, this is actually my father-in-law leading. Excuse me, I'm the better. I could have sworn I heard the enemy commander Visviel sparking orders, but as I search the hills, he's nowhere to be found. A fellow soldier informs me that he's been spotted cowering in the far back behind a fallen tree, and most disgracefully behind his troops. Elder Visviel, he's awful at fighting, so I might as well take him on. And you know what? This music is the opposite of what is appropriate here for this playthrough. Ah, how lovely. I shall duel him. Absolutely. I was chasing visuals over the hills when Podar shoved me aside, barking, I'll take this one, my lord, clumsily swinging his battle axe. I hope he did not hurt himself. He did poorly. How disappointing indeed. Now, let's take down the tribe here. This will be our first conquest. And honestly, a quite easy one. And I mean, it just makes sense. Oh, they have a city here. Jesus, city of Elbings. Wait a minute, does that mean Königsberg? No, right? No, okay. Just check it. This is the only city here. I'll take it. I'm not going to complain about getting a city for free. But I believe that they are Christians, so they gotta go. They got to go. Now, we do not actually have any law to revoke religious titles, so you know what? Maybe they don't have to go. Maybe they don't have to go after all. Oh, I can erect a great pillar. Now, oh, that is cool. We are 10 moral authority. That is practically nothing. Let's be real here. All right, so far so good. Thank you, my dear father-in-law. And we've already expanded here. How is the crusade going, I wonder? 16% in favor of the Pope. He already conquered some stuff over here. The Knights Hospitala and the Aragonese troops have already arrived. And how is, you know, whatever this is going? 36% in favor of the Caliph. Now, are you doing anything? Attacking the Tsar of Bulgaria. Oh, he's going for all of his claims right there. That is going to be quite significant here when he gets Skopje, Oritz, Drumica, and... Uh, oh, actually, Zagora I saw in there as well, right? Kavuna. Wait, he, he's going up all the way to Kavuna. That's crazy. All right, well, so far, so good. The French are in uh, an eternal rebellion the way it seems here. I'm not quite certain. Portugal is holding its own in the West. England looking good. Denmark. Honestly, this is the cutest Denmark that Denmark has ever been. You all know it to be true. Oh, and Novgorod. So Novgorod is a merchant republic, or at least they were at the start of this game, and no longer are they. And they are losing a war 
against Poloske, trying to make them into tributaries. Yeah, the tributary wars are not going so well for our fellas over there. But with that being said, thank you for tuning in. In the next episode, we will continue our removing removal of the Christians. Ah, they went down there. I see how it is. Yeah, as long as they don't expand up here, I am happy. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Later. Alligator.